Good morning Year 8 and welcome to our final English lesson. We are going to finish today reading that short story, Button Button, and also give you some time to be a bit creative and to finish off any stories that you may have been writing so far. Okay, let's recap the story from yesterday. So if you remember yesterday, we um, learned about two characters, Norma and her husband, Arthur. And the inciting incident of that story was the arrival of a strange and mysterious package which contained a button. The conflict arose from the different ways in which each of the characters responded to um, the arrival of that package and in the way that they responded to learning about what would happen if they pressed the button. So Mr. Stewart, again, a very mysterious and unknown character, appears to tell them that if they press the button, they will gain $50,000. However, the consequence of pressing that button is that someone somewhere in the world will die. This poses for the couple a moral dilemma. Is it morally acceptable to, um, to be responsible for the death of a stranger? Or, as Norma tries to justify to herself, does she think that she deserves or is entitled to the money in some way and that it doesn't really affect her if it's somebody unknown whose death she will never have to witness. We know that the two characters are opposed to each other in their responses. Mr. Lewis, Arthur, does not want anything to do with this. He tears up um, the card he's given, he returns the package. He doesn't want to talk about it. In fact, he thinks it's a sick, practical joke and describes it as immoral. Norma, on the other hand, is intrigued. She wants to know more and is really curious, particularly about um, the financial gain that she would get from pressing the button. Today we're going to read on and I'll be asking you to stop in a few places and discuss what you think of the story. Okay, let's go. Norma then decides to continue the conversation about the button. Maybe some eccentric millionaire is playing games with people, she said. Arthur looked up from his dinner. I don't understand you. What does that mean? Let it go, he told her. Norma ate in silence. Suddenly, she put her fork down. Suppose it's a genuine offer, she said. Arthur stared at her. Suppose it's a genuine offer. All right, suppose it is. He looked incredulous. What would you like to do? Get the button back, push it, murder someone? Norma looked disgusted. Murder? How would you define it? If you don't even know the person, Norma said. Arthur looked astounded. Are you saying what I think you are? Well, if it's some old Chinese peasant 10,000 miles away, she said, some diseased native in the Congo. How about a baby boy in Pennsylvania? Arthur countered. Some beautiful little girl on the next block. Now you're loading things. The point is, Norma, he continued, what's the difference whom you kill? It's still murder. The point is, Norma broke in. If it's someone that you've never seen in your life, and you never will see, someone whose death you don't even have to know about, you still wouldn't push the button. Arthur stared at her, appalled. You mean you would? Fifty thousand dollars, Arthur, she said.
Okay, I'm going to pause here and ask you to discuss what you think. They're, they are really now showing their different attitudes and responses to this situation. So what do you think? Do you agree with Arthur here to be astounded, to be appalled, to be incredulous at Norma's at reasoning? Or does she have a point? Can we see this from both sides? Or are we going to take that strong moral standpoint and agree with Arthur? I would like to see some discussion here, so pause the video and say what you think. Okay, so I know that I certainly feel persuaded by Arthur on this one. I think it's absolutely appalling for her to be considering um, taking the life of somebody else for financial gain for herself. However, what I can see is the reason for this motivation. Um, $50,000 seems like a life-changing amount of money. And it could be easy for Norma to perhaps detach herself from um, the kind of emotional feelings towards somebody that she has never met before. So I can see why she might be considering this. But for me, I find it, um, yeah, absolutely a appalling um, decision to, to even consider. Okay, I wonder what you thought. Let's carry on. What has the amount, Arthur responded, $50,000, Arthur, she said. A chance to take that trip to Europe that we've always talked about, Norma, no. A chance to buy that cottage on the island, Norma, no. His face was white. She shuddered. All right, take it easy, she said. Why are you getting so upset? It's only talk. After dinner, Arthur went into the living room. Before he left the table, he said, I'd rather not discuss it any more, if you don't mind. Norma shrugged. Fine with me. I wonder if we can make any predictions at this point as to what we think Norma will actually do. Will she be able to let it go? as Arthur suggests, or do you think she might wish to pursue this further? You might want to think about our story structure at this point. And what stage in the narrative structure are we at? Let's carry on. She got up earlier than usual to make pancakes, eggs and bacon for Arthur's breakfast. What's the occasion? He asked with a smile. N no occasion, Norma looked offended. I wanted to do it, that's all. Good, he said. I'm glad you did. She refilled his cup. I wanted to show you I'm not... She shrugged. Not what? Selfish. Did I say you were? Well, she gestured vaguely last night. Arthur didn't speak. All that talk about the butter, Norma said. I think you, well, misunderstood me. In what way? His voice was guarded. I think you felt, she gestured again, that I was only thinking of myself. Oh, I wasn't. Norma, well, I wasn't. When I talked about Europe, I, the cottage on the island, Norma, why are we getting involved in this? I'm not involved at all, she drew in a shaking breath. I'm simply trying to indicate that... What? But I'd like for us to go to Europe, to like for us to have a cottage on the island, like for us to have a nicer apartment, nicer furniture, nicer clothes, a car, like for us to finally have a baby, for that to matter. For that matter. Norma, we will, he said. When? 
He stared at her in dismay. Norma, when? Are you? He said, seeming to draw back slightly. Are you really saying? I'm saying that they're probably doing it for some research project. She cut him off. That they want to know what average people would do under such circumstance. They're just saying someone would die in order to study reactions. See if there's any guilt, anxiety, whatever. You don't think they'd kill somebody, do you? Arthur didn't answer. She saw his hands trembling. After a while, he got up and left. When he'd gone to work, Norma remained at the table, staring into her coffee. I'm going to be late, she thought. She shrugged. What difference did it make? She should be home anyway, not working in an office. OK, so I'd like us to pause again here and think as that we are building now, that rising action is building, we're feeling the tension increasing between our two protagonists. We're leading up to the crisis, the climax and the most dramatic part. So what do we think is about to happen? And I would like you to also write down here, who, which other character might Norma remind us of in the text we've studied? Remember, Norma wants a nicer cottage, a nicer apartment and furniture and nicer clothes. Which other story had a character that wanted better things? Can you remember what the moral message of that story was? OK, once you've written your answers, we'll carry on. While she was stacking dishes, she turned abruptly, dried her hands and took the package from the bottom cabinet. Opening it, she set the button on the table. She stared at it for a long time before taking the key from its envelope and removing the glass dome. She stared at the button. How ridiculous, she thought. All this furore over a meaningless button. Reaching out, she pressed it down. For us, she thought angrily. She shuddered. What was happening? A chill of horror swept across her. In a moment it had passed. She made a contemptuous noise. Ridiculous, she thought. To get so worked up over nothing. She threw the button unit, the dome and the key into the wastebasket and hurried to dress for work. OK, so we've reached the climax to some degree. We've been building up to this moment since the very first paragraph when the button arrived at the house. And now our protagonist has made a difficult choice. She has decided finally to press the button. Perhaps the temptation and the curiosity of it had just become too much. But at what cost? We know this story must come to some kind of a resolution. So I would like your predictions now. What do you think will have happened when Norma has pressed the button? Okay, over to you to discuss. <laughs> 